Hello Anatomy students, this is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Harrisburg Area Community College and I'm back again with another video on the muscles that move the thigh. Let's begin with the remaining muscles of the anterior thigh starting with the sartorius. The sartorius is the longest muscle in the body and it crosses both the hip and the knee joint running obliquely from the lateral side of the hip and thigh to the medial side of the thigh close to the knee. Its shape is like a strap. Think of a seat belt that runs across your body in a similar fashion. The origin of the sartorius is at the anterior superior iliac spine of the coxal bone. It inserts on the proximal tibia, very close to the tibial tuberosity, that anterior bump that you can feel just below your knee on your tibia. The actions of the sartorius include weak flexion of the thigh at the knee. It also weakly flexes, abducts, and laterally rotates the thigh at the hip. This is the muscle that you use when you're crossing your legs in a seated position. Also on the anterior thigh is the rectus femoris. This is one of the four quadricep muscles and it's unique in that it's the only quadriceps that crosses both the hip and the knee. When we remove the sartorius and the tensor fascia lati, the TFL, we can see more clearly the origin of the rectus femoris here on the coxal bone at the anterior inferior iliac spine. It inserts onto the tibial tuberosity just below the knee. Its actions when working with the other quadricep muscles is to extend the leg at the knee. When it acts by itself, it flexes the thigh at the hip. Our second quadricep muscle is the vastus medialis. That's located here on the medial side of the anterior thigh. Unlike the rectus femoris, the vastus medialis has its origins on the femur. It's on the intertrochanteric line, which is the region between the greater and lesser trochanters as well as the linea aspera of the posterior femur. And like the rectus femoris, the vastus medialis inserts onto the tibial tuberosity. The vastus medialis plays no role in leg flexion because it has no origins on the coxal bone. Instead, it just extends the leg at the knee. The third quadricep muscle is the vastus lateralis. This is the other vastus muscle located on the lateral side of the anterior thigh. And we can rotate the model to show more of that muscle. The word vastus, by the way, means huge, which is in regard to the size of this pair of muscles. Its origins are on the greater trochanter gluteal tuberosity and linea aspera of the posterior thigh. And like the other quadricep muscles, the lateralis inserts onto the tibial tuberosity. It shares the same action as the vastus medialis. It extends the leg at the knee. And to see the fourth and last of the quadricep muscles, we can remove the rectus femoris from the model and see the region of the vastus intermedius. Intermedius means it's in between both the vastus medialis and vastus lateralis. This is the smallest and deepest of the quadricep muscles and it is directly deep to the rectus femoris. Its origins are on the anterior and lateral surfaces of the proximal shaft of the femur and it also inserts like the other quad muscles, onto the tibial tuberosity. And like the vastus medialis and lateralis, the vastus intermedius has the same action 
extending the leg at the knee. Let's now look at the muscles of the posterior thigh, the hamstring group. The first of her hamstrings is the biceps femoris. This muscle is found on the lateral aspect of the posterior thigh, basically by itself, separate from the other two hamstring muscles, which are much more closer together. So you can remember the biceps femoris is by itself in its location. Like the rectus femoris of the anterior quadriceps group, the biceps femoris crosses both the hip as well as the knee joint. Its origins are on the ischial tuberosity of the posterior coxal bone, as well as the linea aspera of the posterior femur. Following the tendon of the biceps femoris down the thigh leads us to its insertion points, the head of the fibula and the lateral condyle of the tibia. Sections of the biceps femoris include flexion of the leg at the knee and extension of the thigh at the hip. The second of our hamstring muscles is the semitendinosus. The semitendinosus is named after its long tendon, which heads down to the tibia. Like the biceps femoris, the origin of the semitendinosus is on the ischial tuberosity of the coxal bone. It inserts onto the proximal shaft of the tibia, just a bit medial of the tibial tuberosity. The semitendinosus performs the same actions as the other muscles of the hamstring group, flexion of the leg at the knee, and extension of the thigh at the hip. The third and last of our hamstring muscles is the semimembranosus. It's located just deep to the semitendinosus. Here's the long tendon of the tendinosus, and we can see the membrane-like tendon of the membranosus just underneath. That's where the name comes from, after its long, flat, membrane-like tendon. You can also remember the semimembranosus because it's the most medial of the three hamstring muscles. Membranosus starts with an M. Membranosus is the most medial of the three muscles. Its origin is the same as the other hamstring muscles, the ischial tuberosity of the coxal bone, and it inserts onto the posterior medial condyle of the tibia. Its actions are identical to the other hamstring muscles, flexion of the leg at the knee, and extension of the thigh at the hip.